Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. In this lecture, we'll be taking a look at data structures in Python. We earlier covered these in overview section where we briefly discussed about list, tuples, dictionary. Now in this section, we'll be exploring them in detail. So the first data structure that we'll be covering in this section will be the list type. And as we know, the list is a mutable data structure, which means that we can add, delete and edit list items. You can see that it is created using rectangular brackets. Next we have the tuple. Tuple is similar to list, but it is immutable. So we have tuple created using curly brackets, as you can see over here. The other data structure is dictionary and this is a key value pair. So we have a key value pair within curly brackets. That's a colon one. So that's a is key and one is the value associated with the key. Similarly, we have b2, c3. The other data structure that we have is set, which is exactly like tuple. So it's created using the curly brackets and it's unordered list of unique values. In this lecture we'll be taking a look at the sequence types in Python and they are list and tuples. Now here we'll be covering list first and all the methods except append and insert are available for tuples as well. As we know that lists are mutable and tuples are immutable. That is the reason why we do not have append and insert available for tuples. So here you can see that I have created a tuple called num and this is having values from 1 to 5 and here we are just looping through it printing all these values one by one. Next over here you can see now if we have to print certain numbers from the list for instance over here I'm saying that I need to print starting from 1 till 4 every second item in the list. So it's gonna print 2 and then 4. That is what this is going to do. And these value, the last one, is optional. So you can specify a, a range like 1 to 4 and then you can also specify the increment value. Next we have search function. So if you want to find out the element exists in the list or not, you can specify that value and if that value exists in the list, its index position will be returned. So here we are making use of the index method and there you can see index starts from position 0. So 0, 1, 2. So index position of 3 will be printed as 2. Next, as we know, lists are mutable. So we can add items to the list. If we have to add an item in the list at the end, we can say num.append and then the value. Similarly, if you have to insert something into the list, at a given index position, you can specify the index position and then the value that you want to insert. So let's go ahead and see all of these in action and then we'll move on to the remove and delete functionality. So here I'm running this now and there you go. You can see the first one prints 2 and 4, index position is shown as 2 and then we have the count of num, that is it contains 7 items in the list and uh, we can do so over here and we can just print the updated list by going over here and saying for loop. Now let's give it a run one more time and here you can see the value of i is being printed 1, 2, 3. You can see that the at an exposition 3 now we have 7 and 4, 5, 6. 6 was appended and then we are listing through the tuple that we have defined beneath. Now let's go ahead and take a look at remove functionality. So if you have to remove a value, you can specify the number itself and say remove this. So it will be removing that value. Let's go ahead and check this in action. Here you can see the length is now 6 and when I'm looping through the list, you can see that 7 is no more part of the list. Other way of removing items from a list or tuple is using the pop method. The pop method, when no parameter is provided, removes an item from the end of the list. So if I go here and remove 
using pop. This will remove the last item in the list, which is six over here. So let's go ahead and run this now. And here you can see six is now not there in the list. It has been removed. Similarly, if you have to remove using an index, you can do that using the pop method by providing the index value. And if you want to use the index, you have the other option using delete method. So I can say delete num three, that is the index position or delete num starting from one to three. So here we are deleting a range of values starting from index position one all the way to three. So if I see over here, starting from one all the way to three, four. So these values will be removed. Let's go ahead and now see this in action. So now the list which is printed, you can see the values have been removed from index position one to three. And the updated list is shown over here, 17456. Next we have join method. So if you want to print the list of items as a common separated value or any specific separator that you want to include, you can do so using the join method. Over here, as we have the list of integer type, we have to convert it into a string type first and then use the join method because join works on string items only. All these methods are also available for tuples excluding the append and insert. This lecture will be covering dictionaries which are another type of data structure supported in Python and here we can compare dictionaries with associative arrays in other programming languages. In Python, dictionary is a collection of key value pairs as you can see. We have a couple of ways defining a dictionary. For instance, over here you can see we can go with the tuple approach where we have a curly bracket and then the keys are specified in a string and colon then the value. So key values are basically separated by a colon. Other approaches by making use of the constructor method, that's the dictionary constructor method. And here we specify the key equals the value. So here we have a equals one, b equals two, and c equals three. Once we have defined a dictionary, we have to take care of that the keys of a dictionary are immutable, but the values are not. So here you can see we can go ahead and update the value of key c to 5 instead of 3 and one and when we will run this we'll get the value 1 2 and 5 instead of 1 2 and 3 in order to print the key and values of a dictionary we have this for loop where we say dictionary dot items and then we can just print the key as well as the value now if you just want to print the keys alone then we can do that as well by making use of dict dot keys method and here we are just printing the keys similarly we can go for values as well so here we can say dictionary dot values and then print all the values if you want to find out whether a key exists in a dictionary or not one way is by making use of this in method so here we are saying print a in dictionary so if the key with this name exists in the dictionary it will return true otherwise it will return false now if you want to get the value of a key irrespective whether it exists in a dictionary or not without throwing any errors in that case we have the get method so we say dictionary dot get and then the key of which you want the value so here we have the key as z and as you can see it's not existing in our dictionary in that case the value of x will be none so now let's go ahead and run this to see it in action first we can see the key values are being printed then key alone and then values alone here you can see a exists in dictionary so it prints true over here and as you can see z does not exist in a dictionary so that's why we get none now if i just go here and say a instead of z save this and run it again you'll notice the value is now being printed for the key a so a holds one and you can see that the value of c was also updated to five so that was all about dictionaries in python thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like the video do give us a thumbs up and share it also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below